Okay, this is Guido speaking here. I've seen dozens of explanations of Fibonacci retracements, how to calculate and charts with examples, plenty of automatic trading systems, spam, Google Finance, etc. But what are they and why are they important? And if you could reference them. I think Fibonacci is important because markets do retrace and do move around according to his ratios. Uh, they are natural ratios. They exist uh, all around us. So you'd expect price action to behave. Uh, Fibonacci. Uh, just how useful it is, I'm not quite sure. I don't use it uh, myself very often. Only when there's a real mystery to a market do I actually sort of wheel out the Fibonacci uh, ratio and say, oh, it's just retraced 75.6% of, of the move from April to October or, or whatever it is. But, you know, the problem with these things is that, you know, you don't know when you should be using it or when you should be using it. So you're having to guess that. So for me, that makes it useless. Um, you know, it just doesn't help. So you will see it afterwards that, you know, there was this retracement, that retracement. But in terms of actually uh, coming up with, uh, uh, you know, when you're actually in position, you're, you know, you're in the heat of the market, I don't think uh, Fibonacci helps uh, too much. Um, and what's the ther theoretical basis for using Fibonacci in, in TA? And is there any scientific basis in it? Uh, yeah, there is, sci there, is scientific ba there is a scientific basis to Fibonacci. I cannot remember for the life of me exactly how it's uh, supposed to be, but it's all to do with fractals and other funny geom geom geometric uh, um, r ratios. And, uh, you know, as I said, it's, just, it's, 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 it's something which exists in nature. It does exist in the f uh, financial markets as well, but it doesn't really help you when you're, you've gone longer with a stock at a pound and uh, it rallies to one pound fifty and you're seeing how far it'll retrace, uh, you don't necessarily know whether it's going to be 140, 132, or 128. I mean, you, it's just, you know, you see it afterwards that it, that's what it did, but it's, it's a sort of retro, retrospective indicator, but not necessarily one which is uh, great, apart from, so let's say, a market's in a free fall, and you see, well, it's, uh, it's fallen, it's now 50% off its, you know, uh, 2013 high, there may be a, a reaction of sorts there, but the problem is you don't have or you don't know how far the bounce will be, whether it's worth getting in or whether it's the market's just going to go straight through that level to the 60% retracement level or 61.8% retracement level and then give you a chance of going along. So I think in the end it almost creates more problems than it solves. So it doesn't it's something you stay clear of? Something I, yes, unless it's something, you know, literally unless it's to educate somebody or trying to show somebody how it works, which is basically means once every few years. So it's, you know, that show, I mean, I, I suppose I'm doing this for a living. I'm writing about the markets for a living. And you quickly learn what is useful and what people want to read and what they don't want to read. So, um, you know, so therefore, if I'm not using it, it's because people don't like it, they don't understand it, or it doesn't actually work. So I'm just left with the, the three basic things of chart patterns, the averages, and um, you know, one oscillator. If I only had to use one of them, it would actually just be uh, uh, probably just the chart patterns and looking for breakouts.